Yeah, perfect. Um, nice to see you all. I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Siobhan. Um, I'm the Community Engagement Officer at Poundmakers Lodge. Uh, I do a lot of work, too, um, uh, in the community, so I do travel a lot. Um, Poundmakers is it's a very special place. It also sits on a very sacred ground. So we are sitting, residing on the old Edmonton Indian Residential School. So there's a lot of history and healing that comes with that site. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And then this is one of my coworkers, Lisa. Hi, my name is Lisa. I am the admissions manager for Poundmakers Lodge. Uh, so we're going to begin a little bit into our programs. So um, first I'm going to start with by doing a land acknowledgement. I'll talk about our philosophy that culture is here. And then we're going to look at, at our programs that we offer on site and then kind of what the aftercare looks like. So first I'd like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the woodland in Plains Cree, the Assiniboine, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, and most recently our Métis people. It is a traditional gathering and trading route for Indigenous people across Turtle Island. So this territory is subject to Treaty 6, which was an agreement between our first settlers and Indigenous nations to respect one's right to self-determination, the medicine chest, and the right to education. So today the meeting place of Amiskwashiswaskegan, also known as Edmonton, is still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. So getting into our lecture, we're going to start lecture, sorry, <laughs> presentation. We're going to start looking at a little bit of um, our philosophy. So we really believe culture is cure. And so we really work with the medicine wheels. We work with the seven directions. We work with the sacred plants. And we really integrate that into our program services with our clients. Uh, mind you, we are a facility that uses Indigenous philosophies, but we welcome all walks of life. Uh, all we ask is them to be open. Uh, to Indigenous knowledge and hopefully that they can integrate it into their healing journey. Um, on site we have elders, so we do have elders, we have ceremonial elders who come on site, we have our earth elders. Our earth elders do take our clients out medicine picking, so we do take them out to go pick sweetgrass and sage and that's also part of their healing journey. Um, we also have community elders, so those who do a lot of community work here in Edmonton will come on site too to work with our clients. Um, we use a lot of oral histories, so we do bring elders from different communities who come and it's a different uh, form of knowledge. They talk about old oral histories and they kind of leave the story to the client to understand the meaning of the story. Um, and then we also have those land-based teachings. And then we also work with healing circles, so a lot of our groups will have healing circles. We have the talking stick. Um, and that allows it to kind of be more inclusive and so everyone has the opportunity to speak if they feel comfortable to do so. And then we also believe in intertribal relations. So we do get many Indigenous people from different nations. So we work with the Dene, we have Inuit, um, Blackfoot, the Cree, and so ideally we do our best to um, bring elders from those communities to come meet the clients. And so when those clients decide to go back to their home communities, our goal is to really have them connected to an elder in that community. So this is a little bit about our Indigenous philosophy. So we do use the medicine wheel. So we really focus on the four components of the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Um, at Palmakers, we really do uh, focus on the emotional component. Uh, a lot of our clients do struggle with emotional disorders. Um, and so ideally, it's allowing them to feel their emotions and then reconnecting themselves to their spirituality. So we really try to bridge that gap with them. Um, and we do a lot of that through ceremony. So we do do uh, sweats on site, we smudge, We'll bring in different ceremonies like the chicken dance, the horse dance, night lodges, uh, to really get the clients to learn um, their culture, but also to understand there's other means to find healing um, in a Western world. And so a little bit of our programs, we do have the 42 day program. So this one is for anyone 18 and above. Um, mind you, with residential treatment, that means they come in, they spend the night, they have roommates. Um, and so in here we have, they are in a group <laughs> and then in their group they do a lot of talking circles they also get a one-on-one -on -one counseling um, there's a lot of stuff where they go out into community mind you covid did kind of limit our community involvement uh, so now we're starting to get back into community um, and then we also have the 90-day program so it's very similar to the 42-day but they learn the young adults learn more life skills uh, they kind of get connected through different means and they have different support systems in place and I'm going to bring Lisa on just to talk about the admissions process for those two programs. 
Yeah, so basically the um, application process is just to, just to visit our website at poundmakerslodge.ca. You will find applications for our programs. We have detox, we have the 42-day program as Siobhan already talked about, and the 90-day um, program. So there are separate applications for any of those programs. can be downloaded on the website. It's simply a matter of filling out the application. They do require to have a referral. So um, an agency, a support worker, a counselor, an addictions counselor, um, employer, could be medical doctor, um, somebody that's willing to support them when they're coming to treatment. And then they do need a physician's medical as part of that application process. So they would need to get in to see a doctor and, um, and have that filled out. Once the application is completed in full, get it sent in to us. Um, we will add them to our wait list and be in touch when we have a bed available for them. Our wait list changes all the time. Right now it looks to be about, um, could be up to three months for a bed, um, worst case scenario. So, you know, if everybody that we currently have in treatment completes their treatment stay um, and everybody ahead of them on the wait list accepts a bed that's offered, worst case three months, it's, it likely would be shorter than that. So. Awesome. And then uh, we did include some new programs on site. So we did open a medical detox. So that's a five bed detox. It is becoming open to the public. Uh, just with COVID, it was more utilized for those who were coming into treatment. Uh, we do recognize that it's very challenging uh, for those who struggle with addictions to stay abstinence for 72 hours. So ideally, we still encourage clients to come in. We'll detox them on site and then we'll transition them into programming. Um, we also brought a pharmacy on site. Uh, this is really helpful too with the medical detox, but we also um, do help our clients who need um, what you call it? methadone and suboxone. So just um, those to help them kind of wean off, especially with the withdrawals in their recovery. So we do help support them there. And we do help eliminate a couple barriers that a lot of our clients do struggle with trying to get access to any type of medication that they need. Um, and we do that through our programs. Uh, some of our aftercare programs, so we do have the Esqueo Healing Lodge. So this is a seven bed facility. It is funded through AHS. Um, so this allows women who are in the recovery to go transition to Esqueo in three months to a year. Um, and in that time, they do a lot of healing. They do a lot of inner child work. Um, they work a lot with elders. They get out into the community more, but this is a really good program for them to kind of reestablish themselves and get them everything that they need before they're ready to go back into community. And it's also a safe house. Many of our women um, have been exposed to a lot of violence. And so this is a safe place for them. And then we work with them and get them connected with those in community. And I just left a quote by one of our clients. Um, they said, I'm clean and this place has saved my life substantially. I can say I love myself and I am proud. Um, and that's what we do at Poundmakers. Does anyone have any questions? All right, cool. <laughs> Thank you.